What's up, guys? Welcome to Wednesday's video. Today is May 11th, 2011. I'd like to uh, give a quick shout out to two of my favorite YouTubers here, Colt. Uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, happy 16. And then Taylor Jasko, happy birthday to you. Happy 18. It's youtube.com slash Colt459595. Link is down below and youtube.com slash tjasko. Two awesome guys. And again, happy birthday. So uh, we're here with uh, VirtualBox, some virtualization software, I believe, for Mac and PC. I have predominantly used it on the on the um, on the Mac here, but on the PC, I know there's some good virtualization software out there as well. Had a request about this a long time ago. I'm finally getting around to it. I apologize for the wait. We've had lots of stuff come up. Been pretty busy myself. Uh, if you're new and you don't know, and you do not know what virtualization is, it is essentially running an operating system within another operating system. For example, I am obviously in Mac OS 10.6.7 or whatever uh, the latest version of Snow Leopard is, 10.6, whatever. Um, and let's say I want to run Windows 7, which we're actually going to somewhat start an installation today. I don't. I'm not actually going to keep it. We're just going to do this for the. The, the sake of the video. Maybe you need some Windows files, maybe you want to emulate old software just to play some games, or maybe you actually have a productive use in using um, PC, or using PC software on your Mac, which uh, I apologize for, but we will be looking uh, at VirtualBox today. It is free software. Go to Google, type in VirtualBox, I guarantee you'll find it. I just downloaded the new version here. It's uh, relatively simple to do. Now, there's uh, you need one of two things for your operating system. You can do this with Linux. You can do this with Windows. You need the ISO file, which um, is a pretty much what is written to the DVD when you go to Best Buy and you buy a copy of Windows, any operating system. Uh, you either need that ISO file or the actual disk that has well, essentially the unpacked ISO file on it. So either one will work. We're going to be doing the, the .iso file today. Actually, with a copy of Windows I had a long time ago, this is Windows 7 Release Candidate 1, Build 7100. This is the x86 copy. Um, last modified was May 5th, 2009, so it's been over two years, and it's about 2.5 gig. So once we open up uh, VirtualBox here in the top left, pretty straightforward. Click on New. We need to create a new virtual machine. There's a bunch of garbage. Continue. Let's give this uh, machine a name. We're going to call this Windows 7 RC Release Candidate 1. And then this is Microsoft Windows installation. You can see you can do this with Linux, Solaris, BSD, IBM OS 2, and then Mac OS 10 or other if you've come up with something else you want to try. And uh, this is going to be Windows 7. Notice it supports 64-bit in Windows XP, Windows 03, uh, Vista, and Windows 2008, you know, the server stuff. We're just going to be doing a 32-bit version of uh, Windows 7 here. Continue. We've got to tell it how much RAM we want. I'm going to go ahead and give it 4 gig. I've got 8 gigs in this machine. Oh, looks like it's only going to let me go to 3.5. Okay, we'll do that. 3584. I've got plenty of RAM. And then the, the actual hard drive here, the uh, boot hard drive, it's recommended to be 20 gig. Now, when you make this, it's not going to immediately suck up all 20 gig. It's going to leave that open and just allocate use. Well, it's actually not allocating use, but it will use it when it needs it. Uh, so we'll just tell it to do that. 20 gig sounds okay. And then the, here's the, the hardware wizard. As we continue, we're going to do dynamically expanded. If you do want it to allocate all that space immediately, click on uh, fixed size. So it'll take that 20 gigs right now. But we're going to do it dynamic so it doesn't waste all of it now. We will call that uh, hard drive Windows 7 RC1. I'm just going to make it uh, about, about 10 gigs here just for even numbers sake. Uh, confirmation there's done. Okay, we've got uh, the VDI, which is the virtual disk image. I'm going to go ahead and guess. I don't really know, but here it is. Uh, we've got 16 megs of video memory, so that probably isn't going to be too good. Let's go into settings, take a look in here. We can rename it over to our system. There's We can adjust our RAM. Um, we don't need to boot from floppy. We're not going to be booting from CD. Now, if you are going to be booting from a CD and running this installation off a, a, a DVD or a CD of Windows whatever or Linux or whatever OS you're trying to emulate here, then uh, leave that checked. Since I'm not going to, I'm going to uncheck it. Again, if you're going to be using it, leave it checked. I'm going to move my hard disk up to the top. That's what we're going to be booting off of. We're not going to be using a network to boot. We can change our chipset here. Uh, we do not need EFI. If you were going to be using OS 10, I believe you need the EFI checked there because that's the Mac version of a BIOS. Uh, we could give it more CPUs, but uh, I only have a dual core, so I'm going to let it use one of those cores. And then our acceleration will enable uh, hardware uh, virtualization acceleration there. Here's our video memory. Let's give it some more. How about it's about 64 megs? I've got 256. Monitor count, just one. Uh, why don't we enable some more video acceleration there? 
Storage, there's our hard drive. We don't need to mess with that. Audio, tell it what speakers to use. And then we can tell it to use our, uh, our internet adapters here if we want to do it that way. So I don't need the internet in this copy. If you do, then come in here and tell it how to do it. Ports, we do not need serial or USB ports. You can mount devices through USB. If you want to put a hard drive or a flash drive in, you can go ahead and mount that. And then we do not need any shared folders. So uh, we've got it powered off right now, and I'm going to have to go in and tell it to use the, uh, the um, ISO file here. So here's the first run, uh, first run. Select installation of media. So there's our DVD drive. It thinks that we want to boot off the DVD. If you do, go ahead, cram your DVD in the computer or your CD and click continue. I want to use my ISO. So I'm going to go browse to my desktop. There's my ISO file. Select open and continue. Done. Now it's going to go ahead and start off that ISO, which should, uh, <laughs> fatal, no bootable media found, system halted. So let's take a look at this and uh, see what we can get running. Now I will add when you get your mouse stuck, um, you get, it can actually get your mouse stuck in the virtual machine and you need a command, let's see, is it command shift? It's been a little while since I've done this. Command click, I'll figure it out and I'll be right back. All right, so it looks like it's the left command key. That's pretty straightforward. Now we'll go up here and uh, figure out how to get that ISO to mount. All right, so finally, I ended up throwing in uh, a different copy of Windows. This is the Windows 7 uh, Beta 1 DVD. I just went up here to Devices, uh, CD, and then just pretty much mounted my host drive there. It took me forever to figure out why those ISOs weren't working. I still don't know, so it looks like we're going to be using uh, a DVD for this. From this point... It is just like running this disk in any other PC, except your PC monitor is now this uh, window right here. This window is pretty much your entire computer. Now, if we open Activity Monitor, we're going to see a crap load of resources used here with, uh, with the virtual machine. Um, right there, it's using 458 megs itself. And once the OS gets going, we're going to be using uh, what I told it to use, about 3.5 gigs. The installation needs to continue exactly as you would on a regular machine from here. Whenever you want to open that installation, open VirtualBox and start running uh, your machine from there. Using a virtual machine is a relatively simple process. Um, if you have trouble, you know, go through and check your settings. Make sure you have your operating system sent to Windows XP and you're using Windows XP instead of uh, Windows 2000 or something like that. It's going to screw up your bootloader. Your bootloader and EFI files and all that crap is, uh, is all based off those settings. So it's going to start Windows. We're going to go through the installation just like you would on your, uh, on your PC at home or whatever you wanted to be using this on, Mac or PC. And I, did hope, I do hope that that helped you... Uh, Helped you guys figure that out. A little tour of uh, the machine here. I mean, you'll pretty much be able to figure it out. It's really straightforward. If you plug in a USB flash drive and you want to mount that when you're in the OS, go to USB devices, click on it. It'll mount it just like it would on, uh, on your other machine. When it comes time to close it, click the X. And when it responds, I, 8 gigabytes of RAM, I tell you, is not enough for OS X. It, uh, it'll just ask you if you want to, uh, to close it down, to is put it to sleep and save those files on the disk like in RAM it would take your RAM and dump it to a disk file or if you want to restart your machine so there you go guys thanks for watching this video that's the virtual machine I hope you uh, did figure it out if you have any questions you think I can answer please leave them down below I'll be sure to get to that if you like the channel and I did help you out please uh, take a second to subscribe to my channel it means a lot our website is techinform.us and my twitter is twitter.com slash James R. Schultz again thanks talk to you in tomorrow's video